This right here is the 64 gigabyte, the lowest tier Steam Deck available. But this one features a matte anti-glare finish and nearly five times the usable storage capacity of the 512 model. Better yet, these upgrades here cost me just about the exact same. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about why the 64 gig model is probably the one just about everybody should buy. We're going to show you how to upgrade the SSD in this thing, a process that is actually surprisingly easy. And we're gonna go ahead and test the actual speeds of the two terabyte SSD I'm throwing in there in comparison to the 512 model that Valve ships. So first things first, what we're gonna do is a little uh, buyer's guide here. I spent a fair bit of time staring at this screen here. They have these 64, 256, and 512 models, starting at about $399 and increasing by roughly $120 per tier. Down below are some of the additional perks as you move up those models or those tiers of decks, but I'm here to argue basically nothing there matters. First, what would seem to be the most important, the difference between the eMMC fast and fastest SSD options we have available. The difference between faster and fastest SSD is likely to be more NAT chips. The more NAT chips means you can read and write to more chips at once, just increasing the speed. Now this may slightly speed up things like installation or even boot times, but loading times and other real world use, you aren't really going to see a difference at all. In fact, the YouTube account Tech Nuovo ran many loading time tests and actually showed that the eMMC and even the SSD card pulls out wins and games loading times, and I'll link to that full video down below. And honestly, I ordered my 2 terabyte SSD from AliExpress, so it took about three weeks to actually get here. And during that time, I, ooh, and during that time, I was using this right here, little Samsung 256 gig SSD. That actually picked up for a uh, pretty good deal. I was running everything off the SSD from modern shooters to emulators, and it was just a great experience overall. And if I would have just added a one terabyte SD card to this base model Steam Deck, I would be completely fine. And that's honestly my recommendation for most people. Moving down the list of perks, let's talk about that screen upgrade. Now this isn't an actual panel or resolution upgrade, rather it's simply the anti-glare coating that they put on. I really wanted this, but I couldn't justify the price of the 512 just to get the anti-glare coating. The good thing is I was planning on using a screen protector for this, and I do believe I found the perfect one. This three pack from up to high is both tempered glass and has that anti-glare coating. Comes with everything you need to clean up the screen, and this is actually the very first time I installed a screen protector without a piece of dust or a bubble staggering around. Cleaned it up, set it on, and just look how satisfying this install was. I had to push one bubble out and it came right out. <laughs> And just some before after, this is without the screen protector. The Steam Deck is basically a mirror without it. And with the screen protector, it really couldn't be much better. I mean, you can see there, that's a super high power light right there. And of course, when it comes to actually using it and the touch capabilities, no difference whatsoever. And this one actually cleans a lot easier than the screen, so that's always a little added benefit. And then that takes us to the other items in these tiers that they have, and this stuff is more just fluff to make it feel like you're getting more for spending more. All of the models come with a case, but damn it, you're only getting that blue logo if you spend the money. And this doesn't really matter, the upgrades for the cases is just aesthetic, very minimal, and I'm probably gonna be getting a case for this anyways, like the kill switch, as I've already kind of scuffed up the back a little bit. And then we have the community bundles and themes, useless in general, especially considering the uh, plugins and all that that we have available to actually customize this thing. Again, fluff. So again, generally an SD card in the base model will be fine, pop on the screen protector, and you're smooth sailing. But I wanted more. To me, this isn't just a handheld gaming device, this is a computer. I might want to use it as a computer for a while. Uh, wink, wink, subscribe, subscribe. And to go beyond the intended functionality, I'm going to need a faster, larger SSD. This Western Digital 2 terabyte drive has absolute crazy storage for the size. Like I said, I picked it up from AliExpress about a month back as drives were being absolutely price gouged on eBay and they were not in stock in any other outlets. AliExpress is actually sponsoring this video and I bought this drive before they even reached out to me, so it just kind of worked out. <laughs> They sent over the super portable Steam Deck dock that I'm going to be using a little bit later to install the recovery image, as well as a few other items I'm going to be checking out in a future video, so do subscribe so you do not miss that. Right now, for a limited time, they're offering 
free shipping on all orders over $10, which as of recent shipping has gotten a little bit better as my personal turnaround time, especially for items like this, has been around two weeks. They have a bunch of cool stuff, especially under their choice category, which results in quicker shipping and returns. With AliExpress, you get better choices, better prices, and below I'll have additional coupons saving you up to $20 instantly. The SSD I got from them ran me $240, and the going average for these two terabyte drives seems to be right around the $300 price mark, so. Speaking in terms of price, if you are somebody who's interested in getting the 64 gig model and upgrading, I've kind of calculated out the average cost of these drives and adding that to the base model so you can kind of see how much money you're saving depending on how much storage you want to put in this thing. Generally going from 512 to one terabyte to two terabyte, it's 100, 200, and 300 dollars. And this added to the 400 dollar price of the base 64 gig model gives us about a cost of 500 dollars upgrading to 512 gigabytes yourself, immediately saving you about a hundred. $150 doing it that way. If you want a one terabyte, it's going to cost you a total of $500 for everything. $50 cheaper than the 512 model, making it so you're saving 50 bucks by getting double the storage. And then if you want to double it from there, you get a two terabyte drive for about $300, making the total cost of the deck $700, $50 more than the 512 model. And me personally, my 64 gig at $400 plus the $240 I spent on the two terabyte hard drive plus the $10 for the screen protector puts me at exactly $649, the exact same price as the 512 model. Ultimately, I'm very happy I went that route. With all this, I'm gonna quickly show you how truly easy it is to upgrade the SSD in this thing. There are eight screws in the back with four short screws in the middle and four longer ones on the side. Once you remove all of them, we could go ahead and pop off the back cover. Now, this is the part that I worried about as I am very good at breaking plastic clips, especially anytime I've tried to do any work on my car or a scooter. But with the deck, it's actually designed to be able to open up, so it's super simple. First and most important, do make sure you remove the SD card. Trying to rip off the case with an SD card in there will result in a bad time. Now to pop off the back cover, you can either use a plastic prying tool or some old card you don't mind taking a little bit of damage. For me, I used my student ID and I started on the bottom wedging the card in the crease and when the first clips came off, it was a fairly easy process all the way around the deck. Then set it down and removing the back exposes all of the internals. This metal plate on the left side of the fan is going to need to be removed. And on this metal plate, there are two screws on the left side and one screw under this metal sticker here. It's recommended to use beezers, but I just pulled it off, do be careful, and don't remove it all the way as you're gonna want to go ahead and replace it. Remove the screw there and then remove the plate. From here, we're gonna want to disconnect the battery as hot swapping SSDs is not a very good idea. And when you do this, be careful. I kind of gradually kind of rocked it out. You don't wanna pull it or yank on it. So just be patient with this step. It might take a little bit of time to wiggle that out, but once you do and once the connection isn't there anymore, I press the power button on top a couple times just to drain any extra power that might be kind of lingering around. When you have a sufficient disconnection from the battery, it's at this point that we can actually remove the old SSD or old MMC flash storage. Just unscrew it, pull it out, and now what we're gonna to want to do is replace this metal wrapper from the old drive to the new drive that we're installing. So so like the sticker, do be careful as you peel it because you're not going to want to damage it and then place it onto your new drive. From there, put the new drive in, screw it down, make sure the battery is plugged back in. We're going to replace that metal plate with the two screws on the side and the one under the sticker. Slide the sticker back in place, place the back cover back on, go around your deck and make sure everything's clipped in appropriately. Replace the screws and you are good to go. Once everything is installed correctly, the device will not boot because there's nothing installed on the drive. Kind of off topic, but one thing that's pretty cool about doing this is, especially if you have the EMMC, is now look, we got an extra little drive that we can use in some other like uh, SBC project or something. So now we want to go ahead and put SteamOS on this guy. So to do this, we're gonna head over to Valve's website and download their recovery image. I extracted the image and used a tool such as Escher to flash the image to a USB drive. Now this is a normal USB drive, a port in which the Steam Deck does not have. So you could use something like this. This is a USB-A to USB-C adapter. They're relatively cheap. Plug it into the deck, you're good to go. This little dock here that I got from uh, AliExpress was perfect for this because not only does it have two USB-As, but it also has a full HDMI, which is nice. I like this dock because we are giving up some ports compared to like the uh, official dock. 
but we in return are gaining some uh, major portability. As a kickstand, it doesn't block any cooling. Overall, super cool. So to get to the boot screen, with your device off, hold down the volume down button and then press the power button. Continue holding the volume down button until the deck makes a noise. From there, we can select our Kingston USB. This may take a moment to boot, but just go ahead and give it some time. When you're in, you have a few options on the desktop. The one we will select is re-imaging. I will note here, this is gonna wipe all your data on the drive, so re proceed with caution and follow the prompts. When you get to the prompt to reboot, do so, and then you're gonna be in the standard Steam Deck startup page. Here, you pick your time zone, Wi-Fi, install the system, it will reboot again, where you log in and you're good to go. Now, just for a fun little comparison, I ran K Disk Mark Benchmarking Tool, which is available in the Discover Store. And with the new two terabyte SD installed, I was getting a read of about 3,500 megabytes a second and a write ranging in between 2,500 and 3,000 megabytes a second. Now, I didn't test the EMMC first, so that kind of sucks if you have a uh, EMMC in your drive right now. You could test it, leave it in the comments below. That would be super cool. But I did have a friend test the stock 5 12 gigabyte model using the exact same test and they were getting a read speed of about 2300 megabytes a second and a write of about 1200. So already this uh, Western digital drive is giving me a, a, a substantial speed improvement over the stock highest tier Steam Deck that's available. Granted, I would assume power draw might not be as good, but we'll see. Now I do have an SD card, so I did test that and speeds are much lower at about 90 read and 50 write. But as I did mention earlier, real world performance in games is uh, negligible. So just overall, I recommend this 64 gig model to just about everybody, whether if you're trying to save a buck or if you're planning on upgrading yourself later. Something overkill like this, like I said, costs basically the same as the 512 gigabyte model, or you can upgrade to 512 gigs yourself, saving you over $100 instantly. The base model, Steam Deck, is probably the very best value in all of gaming, and it's perfect for just about everybody. The only real situation I could see for going with a higher tier model is if, for under no circumstances, do you want to attempt to open your Steam Deck, which it's fine, understandable. There's a little bit of time involved, so depending on how you value that, you might want to go with a higher tier model. Ultimately, it's your money. Personally, I couldn't be happier with how I went about doing things. And if you don't go a full overkill like I did and you upgrade your own deck, you'll have a little extra money for some accessories such as this dock or even a really nice wireless Bluetooth controller. Again, thanks AliExpress for making this video possible. Thank you for watching it. And links to everything that I mentioned in this video will be down below. Um, with that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.